What's up, guys? It's Miki, and welcome back to another episode of Blank Canvas. So I hope my BK fam is doing well. I hope you guys are doing well mentally, physically, financially, in every way that you can be doing well. I hope you guys have hugged your loved ones a little tighter, a little closer. There's been so many things happening, not just around me, but in this world to all of us. And they are dangerous things, or they are quote unquote sad things like people passing away, even though they are definitely in a much better place than to be stuck here on this earth. Okay. So I know we've all been kind of dealing with a lot. It seems like depending on where you stay, or I don't even want to say depending on where you stay, I just feel like the world has been kind of heavy ish. Student loans are coming up. People are trying to figure out how to, you know, get their basic needs met. And I feel like it's a lot of heaviness. And I just want to personally say that. I love you guys. Um, Hang in there. I'm hanging in there with you. It's not just you going through something. I'm trying to survive some stuff too. And let's lean on each other and let's do this because we got this right. And my BK fam is full of people who will impact this world greatly. And I need each and every one of us to be here, to be present, and to fulfill our purposes. Um, We have a lot to offer this world. We have a lot to offer the people in our lives. And God is very intentional. So I love you, BK fam. And this message is for me as well. We got to push through because the work isn't done. And we got to push through because the amount of work that we have already put in, we deserve to see the land. Well, I don't even know if deserve is the right thing because God blesses us with things that we don't deserve every day. I should say that I want to see the land. I want to, you know, I don't want to be like Moses. I don't want to take him there and then not be able to enter. I want to enter the promised land. And I'm not just talking about heaven. I'm literally using this in a metaphorical sense of like, I want everything God has promised me and then some because my life has been very tumultuous at times, very heavy at times, very um, weighty at times. And I want to be like a bird or a butterfly and I want to fly and feel light and free. So it's no point of me giving up at all, but especially right now when I hadn't even made it to the good part. Like if it's still bad, God's not done. And so that's what we have to hold on to. And I hope that encourages somebody this morning. So first thing that I want to talk about on this week's episode is this whole idea of submission. So I was listening to a podcast. I think it's the non-negotiable podcast. I apologize if I got the name wrong, ladies, but I watched an episode because they had Pastor Darius Daniels on there. BD, y'all know we love him. And he was talking about submission and I've heard him speak on submission before, but I was reminded of his thought process and stuff. And I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. So these aren't his exact words at all. I had just jotted down a few notes while I was listening to the podcast. So I could remember to try to explain it to my BK fam, but he was talking about submission and how saying being submissive, he broke down the word submission. So, right. He said sub and then mission, meaning sub to the mission. And it's not necessarily sub to the man. A lot of times in our society, when we hear submission, whether it's a man or a woman, it's kind of like a sticky subject. For women, we are running in the opposite direction. Not all of us. Some people can't wait to be super submissive to it, but we are um, running the opposite way, right? Because, how should I put this? It has such a negative connotation. It's like, bow down, listen to the husband, whatever he says goes, whatever um, his plan is, that's just it. And I think it's blindly being taught. It's also, it's being abused. I don't think God would ever want us to submit to a man who would cause us harm. I don't think God would ever want us to submit to a man who, and I'm speaking, I'm straight. So I'm speaking like, and I believe in God. So I'm speaking like biblically, but of course, let this apply to your relationship. But also don't limit this for me I don't want to limit it to just marriage I know that and I could this is where I could be wrong this isn't PD stance this is my personal opinion this is where I could be wrong I don't want to limit this perspective to just marriage because I think 
there are multiple ways that we submit in life and there are multiple different people that we can quote unquote submit to. But of course, it's never the same and to the same extent that we would submit to our husbands, women. Um, so yeah. And again, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody, but this is, I'm a straight person. So this is the perspective that I'm speaking from. Um, let this apply in your life, how it can and how it will. Okay. And if it doesn't apply at all, just keep listening because I think you'll like the the breakdown of submission versus what society tries to paint it as or what men who are trying to abuse or mistreat women try to paint it as. So back to PD. Um, this is how he broke it down. Sub to the mission, meaning that the woman should be sub to the mission, not necessarily specifically sub to the man, that specific individual. Yes, when you submit to the mission, you'll submit to him in a way, but it's not, it's not like, it's like something that I always say, I'm not following you to hell. Like, what are we submitting to? I'm not following you to hell. I'm not following you to more destruction. I'm not following you to more pain, but I will follow you to better. I will follow you to purpose. I will follow you to what God told you. And that's why I think it's important to have a God-fearing man in your life because you can have any kind of man and he doesn't even have to believe in God and he could still, you know, treat you well and everything. But I feel like if you believe in God and he doesn't, I believe in a sense you'll be unequally yoked for the simple fact of you're going to God as your source, right? And to check in and be like, God, you know, should we move this way? Blah, blah, blah. And who was he going to himself, his friends, you know, do his friends believe in God? Do all of them not believe in God? What are we being guided by? We're all being guided by something. That's just point blank period. Whether it's society sta- societal standards, whether it's something that we have come up with, like the vision for our lives that we want. And I'm not saying that these things are necessarily wrong. I'm just saying we're all driven by something. We all have a reason. And when it's time to check in, we all have people that we decide to check in with. What are their core values? Who do they go to? What do they believe in? And if y'all are on the opposites about that, I feel like there are different instances where you can butt heads and lack. Now, I'm not trying to tell anybody that their relationship can't work out. I'm not God and I'm not sovereign and I'm not a relationship expert by any means necessary. I, that was just my opinion. So he was also saying, you know, it's sub to the mission. If the man doesn't have one, especially a healthy one that came from God, like what are we doing, right? What are we doing? PD also made it very clear that the mission is one, whether it came from the wife or the husband. So it also just goes back to on you guys being aligned and being on the same page and what kind of something that I was just explaining about how if one believes in God and the other doesn't, where are we pulling from? You know, like I'm going to go check in with God. And if I come back to you and you don't believe in God and, or you don't, I don't even want to say the same level of in depth because you can have your own personal relationship. I don't think it's my place or anyone else's for me to say, you're not close enough to him. Like, I don't, I don't know the intimacy of y'all relationship. You don't have to post a scripture to, um, you know, have prove your level of intimacy. I would highly encourage people to read the Bible, but you know, the Bible is a sticky situation for people as well. But that is how you learn more about who God is and who he really says, because just going off of what preachers say or how our parents taught us, it doesn't really build this, the level of intimacy with God that we really need. Reading about him, really understanding his character so that when people put human characteristics off of him, you can be like, oh, this is a human. This is not who God is at his core. I see. And maybe because the person who put human characteristics off on God, maybe they didn't mean to. Like they probably didn't mean to, but it still turned out that way. And so that's always a possibility. And we just have to be careful with that. But my point in all this was, is that if neither one of y'all are submitting to God or, or just one, then what does that look like? What is the mission? Like you have your own mission. The wife has her own mission. 
you guys aren't even aligned on missions and it can steer both of you in the wrong path. And this is just our opposites. And sometimes they may line up, but it may not even reach its full potential for the simple fact of that y'all aren't submitting it to God. Like God, first and foremost, and then you guys talk to each other. And sometimes you don't always hear what your partner heard. Like it was told to your partner. You also have to trust your partner and really believe in their relationship and their level of intimacy that they have with God. Like, nah, I know my wife doesn't play by God. Nah, I know my husband doesn't play by God. If this is what he said, God said, all right, I'm submitting to you, babe. And then he was just explaining how it's like one mission because, you know, when you two are joined together, y'all become one. So it's not, I have this own, my own separate thing and you have that and we're just out here yolo in it. He's not saying it like that, but you know, moments like that can happen. He also used the example of, I forgot the question. I definitely go check out the non-negotiable podcast episode with Pastor Derry Samuels because of course he goes in depth and I just feel like he'll do a much better job than what I'm doing right now. Um, although I am just giving you guys the basics. He also used the example. I can't remember if they asked him, so what if your partner wants to do something that you don't agree with or something, something like that. I forgot exactly what the question was, but even when submitting to the mission, you are out, you are allowed to do things outside of your spouse. And he was using the example that his wife has like this trucking business and he didn't want to be involved with this trucking business. He was like, I'm called to other things. I also have a lot on my plate that I do and I wouldn't have time to properly invest into it. But he said, me not wanting to be involved doesn't limit what she is allowed to do. She can still do it. It's not harming us. You know, it's not stopping anything. It's fulfilling her. I'm still getting things that I need to get done. It's it's better for our mission, our one mission, even though it's something separate. Because, you know, he's a speaker. He's a pastor. He is um, like an entrepreneur. And like PD is everything. He is the jack of all trades. Okay. He is. That's why he always reminds us we aren't this or that. We are this and that. And to not be limited. He, that he really emphasizes that for all of us and it brings that out of people. So long story short, basically his wife um, wanted the trucking business. He was like, I'm not going to be heavily involved, but it doesn't mean that I don't support you. I'll run the investment money, but I'm also going to partner you. I have a friend who is really good in the trucking business. You two go into it together because he has the knowledge to do it. He has the knowledge to help you really um, grow to the level that you need to grow to where I can't, but where I can support you in is I can give you the startup money. I got the startup money, so I'll start you up. But who you need to partner with, and this is not 100% directly me, you're partnering me um, financially. Uh, you'll be partnering with me for the simple fact of this is good for you and good for the family. It's good for us. It's good for our mission. But I'm going <laughs> to, that now that's being a real leader. I'm also going to use the resources that I have to partner you with somebody who I know can help you succeed. I'm not just going to have you tied to me just because you're my wife kind of thing. And I thought that was beautiful. That was my takeaway from it. So definitely check out the non-negotiable episode. Well, the non-negotiable podcast episode with Pastor Darius Daniels so he can break that down even more. And then to end it really quick, I also wanted to read the scripture from Ephesians. And this is Ephesians Ephesians 5 verse 21, probably through 31. So let me just read it to you guys really quickly. And further, you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And further, you will submit to one another. Okay, people leave that out. You wives will submit to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the of his body, the church. He gave his life to be her savior. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives must submit to your husbands in everything. And you husbands must love your wives with the same love Christ showed the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by baptism in God's word. That's another thing. Like everybody want to talk about the submission part, but nobody even talks about the specifics of the submission and how me and y'all got to be ready to die about us. And if you ain't ready to die about me, you ain't ready to be my husband. And it's nothing wrong with it. Like, I don't feel like you should just be out here being willing to die for just any and everybody. Cause I promise you, it won't, it won't always be um, respected or returned, but that's a whole nother thing. Like, man, like, 
the women that y'all are choosing, are y'all ready to die about them? And I don't mean like in an unhealthy way. I mean like real deal die about them. Like God literally, well, Jesus literally sacrificed his life for the church, right? In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man is actually loving himself when he loves his wife. No one hates his own body, but lovingly cares for it, just as Christ cares for his body, which is the church. And we are his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. That's the end of that scripture. And I promise you before men start being like, see, you kind of respect me. Respect goes two ways. And I promise you, I can find something in the Bible to justify that. And one of the main things is the scripture about love your neighbor as yourself. So if you're respecting yourself, you should be respecting your wife and other people as well. Those are the scripture. That was the scripture that I wanted to share just because I notice how people leave out the being submissive to each other part. And then also how men should be willing to die for it. Right. It's not it's like all of that is in the submission part, but they only take out specific things to paint a certain narrative and kind of give a back uh connotation around submission and I also think that could be intentional from the enemy to give us a bad connotation around it so we won't be willing to do it and if we're not willing to do it how can we be in partnership if we're not in partnership and we're not in union when we're joined as one we're still acting as two so either way it's going against what God intended for us to be anyways we're going against the partnership we're going against the union of one we're going against um being in agreement. We know we're two or more gathered and in an agreement that literally will set our faith, not just mine, but everyone involved. It can set faith on fire. When we have faith on fire, it's a level of confidence and confidence that we can do anything. And we have this next level of power. And people think I'm probably sound like sorcery or whatever, but I mean, test my God. I'm just, saying it with my chest, like test my God and he'll prove himself to you. Test my God and he'll show you where he is in nature, in animals, in every instance of this earth. It still baffles me to this day how people don't believe in God, but I don't judge it because I feel like everybody has to have that encounter. There is something that will happen in your life if you should be open enough to experience it. And it's like, you know, it's God and there is no going back. You may stray, but it's like, even then, deep down in your heart, you can't deny it. And I think it's because how can we really deny the person that created all of us, whether we believe in him or not? And that's just my opinion. No judgment, not trying to sit up here, have like this super religious thing and try to convert people. Mm -mm. I want you guys to come to him on your own. And I, for the people who do listen and do believe in God, I just thought that was a nice, different perspective because I feel like the enemy wants us to look at it with a negative connotation. So we don't walk in the power of unity. We don't walk in the power of oneness and we don't walk in the power of submission. There is power to submit to your spouse. There is power for wives to submit to their husband, but it's about how it's done. Who is he submitting to and so many other factors. And I thought that was a good point to bring up. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about on this week's episode is we have talked about um, when people look for jobs, but a lot of people are applying out, applying out, but then the employers aren't responding or they're ghosting. and Or when we look at these job applications, they be like, can you give me a master's degree? In a minute, they're going to say, please give me a PhD, because now even a bachelor, they're trying to treat it like a high school diploma, which is nothing wrong with a high school diploma. But, you know, back in the day, they were like, at least graduate from high school and you can get a good job. And then they bumped it up to, well, go get a bachelor's and then you can get a good job. And now there are so many things underneath the job description. If you get a master's, then you qualify for this job. That's paying like $15, $14 an hour. Like, it's bad. It is bad out here. And a lot of times I talk about it applying from the college student's perspective. But what I noticed is that it's the job market for adults, college students, just people looking for jobs and stuff in general. And, you know, I like to share our real life people's opinions and stories. So this was underneath a video where someone was explaining how they had applied to literally sent in over a hundred applications. And this was one of the comments. A lady said, 
actually, I think this is a guy. He said, I work in the staffing industry. I'm expected to interview seven people per week, even in all caps, if I do not have any open jobs available. I voiced my concerns and how unethical this practice is to management and I got put on a performance improvement plan because of it. Do not ever give 100% to your employer. Remember work is work. Nobody will ever remember how many days and hours you spent working on projects except your family and your kids. The market is horrible right now. Don't let any news article fool you. I do this for a living. I see it every day. And then the other comment was, this is a lady. Oh, her name is Mickey. Shout out to the Mickeys of the world. I work at Starbucks and my ASM told me that he has to meet a monthly quota of interviews a month, even when we don't need people. So Starbucks is literally interviewing people that hope to find a job and they never even had a single percent chance of landing the job. And I have experienced this in my uh, years of job search or whatever, there are some jobs that were willing to give me a chance, grateful for those jobs. And then there were other jobs that were not. And I'm like, I, I have a degree and you're rejecting me from daycare. Like I have a degree and you're rejecting me from stocking the store. So is it that you really need somebody to stock the store or do you feel like I'm going to leave? Or what is it? Is it one of these things? We have to have a certain number of applications come in. We'll take it, but we're not really taking you for the job. And when I think of stuff like that, it's not to minimize stocking a store, being a daycare teacher. I'm, you know, y'all know I'm not minimizing caretaking at all and definitely not teaching in period. I don't care what age level it is at all. Very, very important jobs. So is the stocking. They would be counted as essential workers, okay? Did we not learn from the pandemic? But the crazy thing is to be overqualified and still not qualified. So it's like, what are you guys doing? And then to hear people say, people don't want to work. Please, I have met in my personal life and I have read so many comments about people trying over and over and over and not being hired or not being called back or going through with the interview process and they say it sounds great and then they get ghosted at the end. And it's a two-way street out here. They're saying people aren't applying, but they are. They're just not being hired for whatever reason, for whichever company. But I think it should be like illegal to be like, we have to fill this quota even though we're not looking for it. That, that that should be illegal to even have that job up there. Like take it down. Also, y'all already know how I feel about the asinine qualifications for it. Do you need help or not? Because I need a paycheck. So do you need help or not? That's how I feel when it comes to that. And I wanted to give that quick little update because again, those are real people's perspectives. One more quick thing is we talk about the writer's strike um, and you know, the actors at this point have joined. I have a screenshot of what they're asking for and what they're asking for really isn't that bad. Oh, looks like I deleted the screenshot. But what they were asking for was like, I think more money on freaking residuals since it's gone over to streaming. It was to make sure to protect their intellectual property when it comes to AI technology so that either they can be paid or they can have a say in whether people can use their faces with, you know, AI coming about. And then it was something else. But either way, they were like very... And probably was like increase in wages. Either way, it was very bare minimum because to even qualify for their health insurance, they got to make at least 26000 26000 Now, of course, heavy hitter actors are going to make bank, okay? That's what they do. It's like superstars, uh, superstar athletes. They're going to make bank. That's what they do. But if we can't even get the basic level actor and actresses 26,000 to qualify for their health insurance like they're below the line that they need to be because health insurance as we know I feel like should be a given whether who you are no matter what profession you're in it should be a given I don't know why we want sick people in this world to either continue to make other sick or to not be able to quote unquote contribute to the economy depending on whatever perspective you have I think I've hit both but that's just my take on it so um if you guys are interested in the writers and actor strike, look into it because they're really not asking for much. So these corporations, these CEOs who are making bank off of their backs, give it to them. People who are just trying to qualify for health insurance, even with health insurance in America, you're still spinning a bag, okay? 
give it to them. 26,000, like that's crazy. Keeping all their money from now that it's gone over to streaming, that's crazy. And then also the simple fact of with the AI technology, I think it's smart to go ahead and fight for that and need that to be known because people can use it without their likeness and they should have a say. Okay. People are celebrities are even putting in their wills. Don't use no AI technology to make me do a concert and make me do a movie. Like it's smart. So if you are listening and to be honest, as BK gets older, I'm probably gonna have to put something like that. Like don't use my voice without permission. What's up, BK fam? Hey, it's me, Mickey. Sorry I have to brutally cut into this episode and do it quickly, but I had a whole segment that was recorded in response to supporting the young woman that was missing um, from Hoover, Alabama. But now that the details have come out, well, 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 boy, 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 if I had put out the original segment that I had in support, um, I would have been the biggest clown in this world. I would have been a joke. Um, I say this with the humblest intentions. I'm going to pray for that whole entire situation. It's not my place to judge. I have a God that sits high and look low. And I wish no ill will on anyone or anything. But I had to throw this in here because it basically ruined the whole entire end of the episode. So I didn't want you guys to be like, why is it cutting off this way? Like, what's going on? This is why. This is why. So, um, yeah, all I have to let's end it. OK, I love you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see what we talk about next time. And I'll see you guys next week. OK, bye.